IOTA's nodes have a fundamental problem that has bothered me for a long time. IOTA has no transaction fees. After some searching however, I understood why you would want to run a node without having increasing IOTA supplies. And it's not what you think. For everyone who doesn't know what a node is. A node is a computer running a special program. It carries out the calculations of the network and connects to the other nodes. No nodes, no network. All skeptics have a good reason when they say IOTA's nodes will not be deployed without an incentive. For a long time I feared that there was actually no reason. No rewards can be pulled from zero fees and we don't live on air. With other networks such as Bitcoin, Ethereum and so on, the node operators are directly given part of the transaction or rewarded with a newly minted token supply. As a result, a lot of money hungry people flock to the project mostly by a large amount more than is actually needed. Bitcoin's electricity costs are high, we all know that, but it doesn't have to be that way. Exactly the money you get is why so many miners exist and thereby increase the proof of work difficulty. For those who aren't native Bitcoin speakers, proof of work means many computers compete for the same reward and the strongest one gets it. As everyone constantly strives to outperform and build larger computers, power consumption is increasing. This is exactly the reason why IOTA is so energy efficient and the network has 0.00009% of the power consumption compared to Bitcoin. Well, now we know why it works on other networks and why we can't use the same logic on IOTA. Before we go into the reasons why there will be quite a few node operators, we need to know how many nodes we need and what a node costs. In the IOTA block they take 450 nodes in a test for the future IOTA 2.0 network. In comparison, the mainnet right now has around 400. There is no minimum to how many nodes we need. In principle, 4 nodes are enough, but that's not very secure. So 500 nodes should be good. As a rented server, a node runs from $33 a month, but you pay a hefty price for the cloud provider. A node that you can run yourself only needs electricity, so after you have built a computer you pay almost nothing. The OTA Foundation states that you can operate a node for as little as $5 per month. If you really want to pay as little as possible, you can use Raspberry Pis. If I combine the electricity consumption that they state in the new blog post with a normal electricity contract that brings me to $10 a year. That's less than $1 a month. With $200 to $500 once and $1 to $5 per month, it's even possible for someone with low income to operate a node if he has a reason to do so. To make it exciting, I'll start with the reason I think are the least important. IOTA is your hobby and you enjoy building a node. You're happy to support the network. For this reason, a lot of nodes are currently running. But I don't think people spend money on their nodes out of goodwill forever. I'll subtract one of the 500 nodes. You operate a service that processes data in the IOTA network and you resell it to interested parties. This means statistics, 
like some exchanges do it. There are quite a few, let's say 10 data providers offer a service. Just as cafes provide free internet access, websites or online service providers operating in the IOTA system can offer nodes and that way advertise their product or service. Because the cost of a node is negligible, it's easy to build trust and customers are happy about a trusted node. Let's say very cautiously that around 10 other companies use this for a reason to operate nodes. 479 nodes to go. But not everyone uses the internet in the cafes, because it's slow and you don't want sensitive data to be passed over it. And that brings me to one of the main two reasons why you would run a node. Companies that constantly use IOTA for transactions and other use cases will not outsource trust. That's exactly why IOTA exists in the first place. The same applies to government programs. And this can be seen well with TLIP, a program where governments in East Africa using the service are expected to run DLT nodes. With a one-time investment of around $200 and monthly electricity costs that are negligible for companies, it is very likely that some IOTA using companies host nodes. In the future, the market for plug and play nodes will open up. That means nodes that you can just plug in and use immediately. I think that more than covers the remaining 479 nodes. If not, I still have an ace up my sleeve. It is important to know for the next part that these systems are still being discussed and may change in the future. Transactions in the IOTA network are fee-less, which means you don't lose any tokens and you can also send information over the network for free. But the whole thing goes a little deeper. If you want to send something in the IOTA network, mana has to be spent on it in the future. MANA is a resource you automatically get by holding tokens. Transactions sent with more MANA are then preferred. This means, if there are more transactions pending that can be sent, those with the most MANA come first, giving them faster access to the network. So if you want to send a purely informational transaction, you either have to hold tokens or buy MANA from someone. And that brings me to another way of getting mana. Running a node. Thus, like on the Bitcoin network, validators have a monetary reason to run nodes. But there is no exponentially increasing proof of work or electricity costs. Companies that generate less mana than they use pay a price for mana producers, where a significant portion will come from node operators. In summary, I wouldn't worry about having too few nodes. Till next time. See ya!